Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day right here from our space at the VFS Cafe in Vancouver. That's at 390 West Hastings Street, where on Monday, Wednesday and Friday we make a show called EP Live. And tomorrow we have Pia Guerrera, who is the co-creator of Why the Last Man, the incredible comic series, and also Ian Boothby, who has just co-created a brand new comic called Exorcisters, which we're going to find out all about tomorrow on EP Live. The show starts at 3 p.m. PST or 6 p.m. EST and you can come right down to our space here and watch it live in person if you are in the Vancouver area and of course it'll be here on this channel. But today we have a rundown to get through and this one's going out to uh, Raven 80 Wolf X2 uh, who says a huge fan of the gaming interviews that we do. Thank you so much. Let's get started with your rundown. A new version of Sonic has been unleashed and pretty much everyone is unhappy about it. The first images from the new Sonic the Hedgehog film have appeared online, giving us our first good look at the character. The images, which are apparently part of a marketing portfolio for the film, were briefly posted online by the advertising firm Hamagami Carol Inc. before being quickly taken down, but not before screenshots were made. As you can see, the new movie Sonic doesn't look very much like his game counterpart and has a more humanoid look, complete with anatomically correct musculature and eyes. The notoriously vocal Sonic fan base was quick to ridicule the new look, and even Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka, who left Sega in 2005, has publicly criticized the changes. Keep in mind that no official stills from the film have been released, so the final character design might change, although these leaked images do resemble the Sonic from the teaser posters that were released last year, which were also controversial. The film hits theaters this November. Yeah, that Sonic design, it's, uh, it's pretty hard. I, I hate you know, just throwing hate out there when you just see images because they're completely out of context and they don't have all the movie lighting and, you know, all the, the polish that goes into these things when visual effects crews do their magic. And none of that has been applied to these just, you know, sort of cartoony renders of what a humanoid Sonic would look like but they look terrible. And I'm reminded of the uh, Jared Leto Joker images that uh, got released before uh, Suicide Squad came out and he had all the stupid tattoos all over his face. And everybody was just like, what the hell are they thinking? It's very similar to that controversy. And uh, yeah, things are not looking good for the Sonic movie so far. I hope we're all wrong. I hope this thing ends up being fantastic. And Jim Carrey is terrific in the movie. I just, I hope it's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, certainly not the same level of charm and delight, I think, that we're seeing with uh, Detective Pikachu. And I think that's gonna be the direct comparison that we're gonna have, at least in this year. I will electrocute you. No matter how worried Sega might be, they're probably very happy not to be EA or Bioware right now. Things just keep getting worse and worse for the new game Anthem. Following mediocre reviews and a less than stellar launch, reports surfaced earlier this week that the game is hard crashing the PlayStation 4. Many users have reported that the PlayStation 4 version will suddenly crash, forcing them to restart the entire console. And in some cases, it only restarts in safe mode. In a post late last night on the official EA forums, the dev team admits that they're aware of the issue and are currently working on a fix. In order to help, Bioware asset players affected by the issue file a report on their forums listing their console, when the crash took place, and what steps they took to get their PS4 back on again. Unfortunately, at the time we're filming this, Bioware has yet to say if they've determined the cause of the problem or how long it might take before a solution is found. I gotta tell you something, I have that uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, the Spider-Man PS4 Pro, and if Anthem bricks my machine, I am going to be furious. I will be sending a bill to Bioware to fix that thing. I'm still playing Anthem. I think today might be my last day of playing Anthem before I review it. But yes, I'm, I feel terrible for Bioware. I feel terrible for EA. I think everybody wanted to build something amazing here, but for whatever reason, this has been a terrible launch for this game. I think we can all unequivocally say that. I'm heartbroken. I love Bioware. I love that company and the people that I've met there over the years really I have just been phenomenal and so talented, so it's uh, it's devastating all of the bad press that Anthem has got, and honestly, this might just be a, a nail in the coffin for this game, which is uh, which is terrible, and it's way too soon to call that because we do know that live games like this can turn things around. We saw that happen with Sea of Thieves. Even Destiny had a very rocky start, so Anthem might pull out of this crash course, but uh, they got to fix these problems, man, big time. 
Over to a more optimistic version of the future, Captain Jean-Luc Picard has recruited his first two officers for his new crew. The upcoming Star Trek series, starring Patrick Stewart as the iconic Enterprise captain, has found its first two supporting players. Heroes star Santiago Cabrera and Law & Order SVU's Michelle Hurd have been cast in the show, although no official word yet on what characters they might be playing. There are rumors that the show will see Picard take command of a ragtag team aboard a new ship, not the Enterprise, in order to go on a dangerous mission not sanctioned by Starfleet. This sounds like the show will be exploring a less law-abiding, more Indiana Jones-style version of Picard, similar to classic TNG episodes like Captain's Holiday and the two-part Gambit. The series, which still doesn't have an official title yet, is slated to begin filming next month, so expect to see it on your view screens late this year or early 2020. I hope this is awesome. It's going to be great to see this character, uh, this performer, this actor surrounded by state-of-the-art visual effects. I'm really stoked for that. And hopefully, even if he is going a little rogue, Hopefully there is this optimistic kind of version of the future embedded into this show. Can't wait. Tell me more. It looks like another game maker has jumped ship from Steam to the Epic Game Store. Retro City Rampage developer Brian Provinciano has announced that the PC version of his new game, Shakedown Hawaii, will be available on the Epic Game Store. The latest trailer released this morning displays the Epic Store logo with no mention of Steam, although right now the game's Steam page is still up and running. More and more developers have been switching to the Epic Store because it only takes a 12% cut of revenue rather than the 20-30% to taken by Steam. No release date yet for Shakedown Hawaii, but it's expected to be out soon. Alongside the PC version, Brian is also working on versions for the Switch, 3DS, PlayStation 4, and Vita, despite the fact that Sony just discontinued their handheld device. We had a good chance to check out Shakedown Hawaii when Brian was on the show, and it was phenomenal. The game looks like it's done, but I know he's just tuning and polishing and tweaking. You know what? I think that we're going to start to see a lot more competition between Epic and Steam, and it's going to get a little bit more heated and we're going to start to see a lot more parity with uh, what the developers are getting for sales. Of the, ultimately, the competition will be a good thing for game creators. You know, I think it's healthy. I think it's good. I don't, I don't think that Steam should have this monopolistic stature within the games community, and I think that this is going to make their service better. The best thing that will happen from this is they will go back and forth, and they will serve up games in a clearer manner, and the percentages going back to the people that make these games will be better and beefier. I think that's a good thing. The director of last year's feel-good movie, Hereditary, has another bright and happy family movie on the way. Take a look at the first trailer for Midsummer, the latest film from Hereditary writer-director Ari Aster. It looks like another weird one. The story focuses on a group of friends who travel to a small town in rural Sweden where things are not what they seem, and what is meant to be an idyllic vacation quickly turns into something very sinister. Like Hereditary, the film appears to be steeped in satanic and pagan imagery, and it's also clearly inspired by the look and subject matter of the classic British horror movie The Wicker Man. Midsummer hits theaters this summer. Hereditary will stick with you. If you ever see that movie, you are never going to forget it. The one thing that you will say about Hereditary, e even if the movie is so off-putting and makes you squeamish, is that you marvel at the filmmaking. This is a fantastic writer and director, and he built something very special. So I'm excited to see Midsummer. And you know me, I'm not a big horror movie fan, but I am a fan of good filmmaking, and this guy is clearly capable of that. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We've got a brand new EP Live scheduled for tomorrow, so please join us for that if you can here in Vancouver. That's at 390 West Hastings Street. Our guests are going to be Pia Guerrera, the co-creator of Why the Last Man, and Ian Boothby, the co-creator of Exorcisters, two comic book juggernauts, and I can't wait to have them here in studio. You can watch us, of course, on the stream if you can't make it in person. show starts at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Play forever.